The Civil War was over. The 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the United States Constitution ended slavery, guaranteed citizenship, and expanded voting rights to African Americans. African Americans looked upon the future with optimism. Freedom to enslaved Africans meant a whole, you know, a whole new world, but it meant something completely different to white segregationists. They were not used to this, and they wanted to take this liberty away, this freedom away from African Americans. In the late 19th century, Memphis was a bustling city on the banks of the Mississippi River. Memphis was an ideal home for Ida B. Wells, a teacher-turned-journalist from northern Mississippi. She co-owned a successful newspaper, The Free Speech and Headlight, located on Bill Street in downtown Memphis. Wells published articles in the paper to expose injustices against African Americans. She was unrelenting. Um, she was a fighter. She was courageous. Um, she was very independent. She was a feminist before feminism was in mode. In March 1892, Thomas Moss, a friend of Wells, was murdered at the hands of a mob. This would change her life forever. Thomas Moss, in so many ways, sort of was emblematic of what was happening, of the rise of blacks uh, in the South. He did everything one just had to, to do to, uh, to, to rise, uh, and was just a, a sterling citizen. Everybody in town knew and loved Tommy, an exemplary young man. He was married and the father of one little girl, Maureen, whose godmother I was. He and his wife, Betty, were the best friends I had in town, and he believed, with me, that we should fight wrong whenever we saw it. Moss, a mail carrier by day, was a part owner of the People's Grocery, an African-American-owned cooperative store. The People's Grocery was located in South Memphis at an area known as the Curve. It was uh, seen as a outstanding thing in the black community uh, because it gave them an opportunity to, first of all, patronize their own uh, uh, people, and it helped to sort of uh, infuse the belief that black entrepreneurship could flourish in Memphis. The success of the People's Grocery escalated economic tensions with William Barrett, a white grocery store owner whose business was also in the area. In early March of 1892, a game of marbles escalated into a fight among African American and white children who were playing outside the People's Grocery. The fight grew quickly. Soon a large crowd was engaged in a brawl near the cooperative. Allegedly, two employees of the People's Grocery, William Stewart and Calvin McDowell, joined in the skirmish. Barrett tried to get the place shut down, and he went to the authorities in Memphis uh, and reported that the place was a public nuisance. Uh, and, of course, the authorities in Memphis at that time were all too willing to accommodate Mr. Barrett a Shelby County judge deputized William Barrett and a group of white men. The judge gave Barrett permission to take action against those running the People's Grocery. Fearing retribution from angry whites, the owners of the People's Grocery asked for protection from authorities. However, that protection was refused. On March 5, 1892, Barrett and his men armed themselves and marched towards the People's Grocery. The African-American man who owned the People's Grocery had gotten word uh, that authorities were coming uh, to, to look into the charges that had been filed by Mr. Barrett. And so there were several other black men in the store at the time. And sensing that there may be some trouble, they were indeed armed. Law enforcement officials who were not uh, dressed as law enforcement, they were actually dressed in plain clothes, showed up. Uh, and pretty much raided the place. As a result of the raid, shots were fired. 
Thomas Moss, Kevin McDowell, and William Stewart were later arrested and held at the Shelby County Jail. Even when they were in jail, uh, there was talk of, of, of a lynching that was going to take place because they had uh, shot, shot uh, these deputies. Beginning in the late 19th century, whites used lynchings, horrific and unlawful executions, to terrorize African Americans who challenged white supremacy. Lynching becomes this kind of form of terrorism because it means that no black person is ever safe. They will not, they will not even get to defend themselves if they're accused of crime. African Americans saw Memphis as a place relatively safe from the practice of lynching. This belief was shattered on March 9, 1892 at around 2.30 a.m. when 75 white men wearing masks surrounded the Shelby County Jail. While they slept, a body of picked men were admitted to the jail, which was a modern Bastille. They took out of their cells Thomas Moss, Calvin McDowell, and Will Stewart, these three officials of the People's Grocery, put them on a switch engine of the railroad, which ran back of the jail, carried a mile north of the city limits, and shot them to death. The newspaper, uh, the appeal avalanche, was tipped off that uh, the men would be taken from their cells. As a matter of fact, a reporter, once he got the tip, showed up and was there to report it all. The ringleaders in the assault on the deputies who raided the curve last Saturday night are missing from their cells in the Shelby County Jail this morning. It is a reasonable inference that Judge Lynch has passed sentence upon them, and that this sentence has been executed. Not a gun was fired, not a shot was heard. Until they read it in this morning's appeal avalanche, the people living in the vicinity of the jail will not know that the Avengers swooped down last night and sent the murderous souls of the ringleaders in the curve riot to eternity. From the newspaper columns, it was said that Thomas Moss begged for his life for the sake of his wife and child and his unborn baby. That when asked if he had anything to say, told them to tell my people to go west. There was no justice for them here. That Calvin McDowell got a hold of one of the guns of the lynchers and that a shot was fired into his closed fist. Where the three bodies were found, the fingers of McDowell's right hand had been shot to pieces, proving that those who wrote the newspaper piece were eyewitnesses or got the facts from someone who was. No one was arrested for these murders. Soon thereafter, an angry white mob ransacked and destroyed the people's grocery. The lynching at the curb was shocking, particularly because the three men who kill, were killed were all well-known, upstanding members of the community, that there was no accusation of any crime. And it made um, blacks in Memphis, such as Wells, begin to question whether they had any future in Memphis. She was the first one, and a woman, to realize that lynching had its base not in the myth of black men being attracted sexually to white women, but that it was an economic means of keeping the black folk down. She was the first one. I mean, this woman had some brains. Ida B. Wells was furious after the lynchings of these men. Emboldened by this injustice, Wells used her paper, The Free Speech, to confront and condemn whites who supported or ignored racial violence against African Americans. In May 1892, only a few months after the lynchings of Moss, McDowell, and Stewart, an angry mob of whites destroyed Wells' office on Bill Street, where she published the free speech. Wells was out of town during the attack. However, whites threatened to lynch Wells if she returned to the city. Because of this threat, Wells never returned to Memphis to live. Memphis transformed Wells into a champion for civil rights and a crusader against lynching. 
her experience in the city would shape her activism the remainder of her life. Thank you.